Within the ranks of the Xeno Hunting Death Watch, there have been countless heroes that have carved legendary tales exemplifying the courageous and vigilant role of its unique Space Marine chapter. As Battle Brothers second to the Chamber Militant of the Ordo Xenos, it is the duty of these demigods to enact the will of the Emperor and to remind aliens that even outside the boundaries of the Imperium, the Emperor's wrath can still find them. The best way to truly understand the fear and awe these great warriors create is by exploring the lives of all of the heroes of the Death Watch. And with that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 facts about the 40k universe. I am your host Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the heroes of the Death Watch. If you guys are new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. So if you guys have questions about the universe or would like to see me react to a certain comment about what's going on in the hobby or within the lore, just comment down in the comment section below. I'll get to it in the following video. But with all that said, let's get into the heroes of the Death Watch. Let's begin with the tale of Watch Captain Kyle Vibius, who had already possessed a notorious hatred for the Xeno and a litany of honors given to him by his chapter long before his service in the Death Watch. Kyle was a proud warrior of the Marines Arant Space Marine chapter, a chapter that was designed to repair a power vacuum created after the Age of Apostasy and the Cursed Founding. This placed the entire chapter on a continuous crusade all across the galaxy, and it was during the Coronith Crusade that Kyle's unit was ambushed and captured by a dark Eldar raiding force. The Drukhari pirates took the Space Marines into the Dark Realm of Kamara, where they were stripped of their power armor and weapons and forced to do battle in the savage gladiatorial arenas of the Dark City. As Space Marine gladiators, Kyle and his battle brothers fought the toughest Xeno beasts and slaves that the Dark Eldar could gather. When that wasn't enough, the Drukhari witches dove into the arena to pick at the wounded space marines. This brutal torture caused the death of many of Kyle's brothers, but every fallen marine simply stoked the fire of rage and hatred burning in his heart. Eventually, the Dark Eldars found newer playthings to occupy their time, and Kyle seized this opportunity to organize his fellow captives and launch a small but very determined slave uprising. This caught the Drukhari by surprise, and the slaves fought their way to freedom. Kyle and the surviving Marines of Rance managed to return to the Imperium and their chapter. This heroic accomplishment elevated Kyle Vibius to the honored rank of Dark Void Elite, a special position given only to the veteran heroes of the chapter. It was then decided that he would represent the chapter in the Death Watch, a role that would help Vibius express his newfound hatred for the Xeno. Vibius fought under the command of Watch Captain Braun of the Dark Suns Chapter, a veteran commander who quickly realized Vibius' talent as a leader. It was not long before the Marines Arant battle brother was leading his own kill team. When Braun was mortally wounded during the confrontation with the Slot Overseer in the Black Reef, he recommended that Vibius be promoted to the rank of Watch Captain, a role that he has held since. Outside of the Watch Captain's control, the Marines of Rant have sworn ancient oaths that link them closely to the rogue trader House of Akeo, and it is known that Vibius has taken advantage of these links during his career in the Death Watch. From time to time, void ships bearing the heraldry of rogue trader Akeo have docked at watch stations throughout the Acura Salient. These void ships possess the correct inquisitorial codes to gain access to the stations, and it is said that many times Vibius went aboard to confer with the vessel's mysterious passengers. There are few that know any further details about the links between the Watch Captain and the Rogue Trader, but many Death Watch operations put into motion by Vibius after one of these meetings have been uncommonly successful. Nevertheless, Vibius has personally led a number of kill teams into battle against the Xeno and the Heretic alike. There are many in the Death Watch of the Jericho Reach who consider him uncommonly reckless and aggressive, particularly towards the corrupted soldiers of Cult General Alex Sarda. Some whisper that Vibius' unusual zeal is merely disguised pragmatism, that Vibius believes the sooner the threat of the Stigmartis is eliminated, the sooner the Watch Captain can resume his own quest for revenge against the Drukhari in the region. To this day, Watch Captain Vibius continues to add glorious victories in the name of the Death Watch, and has become the embodiment of the alien hunting rage that exemplifies the chapter. Now we move on to another living legend of the Death Watch, Watch Captain Esteban de Dominova, a battle brother whose past is a complete mystery. He was second to the Death Watch by his chapter The Crimson Fist long ago, 
A quiet and straightforward man, Esteban is recognized by everyone taking vigil in the Jericho Reach as an almost divine apothecary, capable of resurrecting warriors that would otherwise be lost in battle. Countless battle brothers owe their limbs to this almost mythical healer, whose medical skills and finely honed surgical abilities border on the unnatural. He also has a strange affinity towards xenobiology. His understanding of the non-human form surpasses even most within the Ordo Xenos of the Inquisition and some within the Adeptus Mechanicus Magi Biologists. The pale-faced warrior rose to become a watch captain and now serves as a fabled guide for many kill teams within the region. Some go to De Dominova for medical assistance, either to be taught a particular surgical art or for some physical care. Others seek out the watch captain to discuss specific Xeno species that might be encountered in an upcoming trial. Each and every battle brother that meets with him describes the space marine as stoic to the point of robotic. His colorless eyes and piercing glare probe their minds. He is incredibly reserved to newcomers, but once rapport has been established, it is revealed that he is pious and a passionate warrior. Knowledgeable on many subjects, fluent in dozens of languages, and possesses a very dry wit. Esteban de Dominovo is an example of what happens to the legendary warriors who choose to take up multiple vigils, and they dedicate their lives to their newfound work. And now we move on to the very unique watch captain Artemis. Artemis had an uncanny ability to sense and recognize alien incursions and influence on Imperial individuals and locations. He was originally a battle brother of the Mortifactor's chapter, but was brought into the Death Watch to put his unusual abilities to use. Artemis commanded several Death Watch kill teams against the Xeno species known as the Knib in the Dornian sector. The species actually dated back to the War in Heaven. This was done at the request of the Imperial Guard's Caslon Regiment. Artemis personally slew the K-Nib leader and ended their attack upon Imperial space. Even though the credit was given to the Caslon Regiment, he was quoted as saying, Do not ask why kill the alien, rather ask why not. Currently, the true whereabouts of Watch Captain Artemis is a mystery. The last known record is getting an augmented eye and an augmented arm after being attacked by Tyranids in one of the Watch Fortresses. His true whereabouts right now are completely unknown. And that's the lore to the Heroes of the Death Watch. So I really appreciate you guys listening, and we'll talk tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. Oh, if you could put my freedom first, you know.